What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to build out the layout of this page right here. So we're going to get this nice large title up here with the amount and then we're going to have these buttons here which right now are just going to be printing out the number. But in the future video we're going to actually set it up to work with Firebase and actually save those numbers. But this is just going to be covering the layout of this page. In so. terms of design, this idea was heavily inspired by the Cash App. As you can see it's very simple to do calculations here on the Cash App and it's something that's familiar to people which is why I use the Cash App's layout and modified it to work really with this app. Entering an amount of money is the same. So that is where the inspiration for this layout came. If you haven't used the Cash App before and would like to get $5 for free, you can use the link down in the description and you'll be able to get a $5 credit when you sign up for the Cash App. So let's get started the deposit view here which as you can see right now is just a blank screen with an indigo color we're going to add a few parameters in addition to this we're going to set that width and height to be the height of the screen and the width of the screen so we do that with the media queries like that and now we're going to set the child element of this and we want this child to be a fully wrapped in that safe area and then within that we can add a column and then within this column, we can add all our elements, which are going to be that total up here. And then we're going to have the calculator and then we're going to have the buttons below. Firstly, let's go ahead and do a fitted box. And we're going to fit this to be a fit of the width. And what this is going to do is make sure that our total number up here never goes to two lines. We're always going to want it on that one line. And then we can give it that child element and actually give that text, that text here. And this text is going to essentially be that dollar amount. So for right now, we can just put a placeholder of 100 in there. And actually, we do need to escape this dollar sign. And let's go ahead and add a slight bit of style to this. So we want the font of this to be bigger. We'll set the font size to 100. And then the font weight, we're going to make bold and the color we're going to set to white. If you save that and go back, you can see now we do have that amount there, which looks pretty good. And you'll notice if you do add a very large number here and go back to it, it is going to all stay on one line. So that is what this box fit is gonna do for us there. Later, we'll actually limit how many characters that value can be, but that is good for now. Just while we're working on this, I'm temporarily going to switch the navigator view to actually have this deposit view as the first element so that we don't have to keep clicking into that every time we go. All right, so now we can actually go ahead and add that calculator here, and that's going to be a grid view of buttons. So essentially we're going to have uh, 10 buttons plus the back button, so really 11 buttons. We can do this all with a grid view. We're gonna first do a container here. And then within the container, we're going to have that grid view. So we're gonna do grid view dot count and set the cross axis count to three. So all that is doing is saying that we only are gonna have three, three elements going across. Then we can set shrink wrap to true, as well as setting the physics to never scroll, because we don't want this to actually be scrollable at all. And that's actually gonna be the never scroll physics there. And let's format this. And then for the children element here, it does take a list of widgets. So essentially each one of those buttons, like one, two, three, all the way to nine, is going to be one button in this list. So let's go ahead and build out one of those buttons. That is going to be just a flat button. So this flat button is going to have a child element of text. We're going to give that the value of one for this one. And we will add a bit of style to this as well. Uh, font size to a little bit larger than the default, so 40 will be good. And then the color is going to need to be white, uh, or at least we want it to be white. And then we're gonna need an add and on pressed for this. For right now, we're just going to print out one for the on-press. 
and in a bit we will actually set that up so you can see that one appears right here you can see if you copy this and place the two here and save it you will get what you want there now this is not the best way to do this because you can imagine we'd have to do a whole list of very similar logic and especially when it comes to this on pressed the logic for it is going to be essentially the same the only difference is going to be the number so we want to move this into a widget of its own and then be able to just generate these buttons by passing in a number so let's create a new widget and we're going to call this number button and it will take one parameter which is going to be a string and that will be the number and then the reason it's a string is because we will be displaying this all as a string not actually as a number so let's go ahead and paste that button in that we just created and return it from here instead and now we can call this number button where we were calling it here and we can just pass in that one as a string and that needs a comma and you can see the one is there so that is good but we really want to set the whole keyboard as one as one call so we're going to create a new uh, function here which is not going to be a widget it's just going to be a function and we're going to call it set keyboard we can actually do this below our widget so set keyboard and this is going to essentially just generate the list that is going to go right here we want this to return a list so let's go ahead and define a list and it's going to be a list of widgets and then we're going to name that list keyboard and it will just be an empty list to start so first thing we're going to do is add the numbers one through nine and to do that we can use a list dot generate and we want to generate nine items in this list and then we can use that index which will just go one through nine and we're going to actually put this on a couple lines now that we have this index which will be essentially going one through nine we can add that to that keyboard we can add that to the keyboard list up here so we're going to do keyboard dot add and then add that number button which is going to be the same thing that we were doing right here so we're going to add that number button and we're going to pass it instead of the actual one here we're going to pass it that index so we can use this to get the index and since this list is going to start at zero we actually need to increase this by one. So we want the list to actually start at one. So do index plus one here. And we can actually remove that and add the semicolon there. And once we have that keyboard adding the numbers one through nine, we can actually just return that keyboard from here. And then if we use this set keyboard and replace the whole block here in the grid view, you'll see we do get all of these, but they are all a one right now. So the reason they're all one right now is our flat button here is not using the actual number that we're passing into it, it's just using this hard-coded one. And that's a simple fix. We just need to go ahead and use the number here instead of the one and we can print it as well for now. But if you update that, you can see we get the numbers one through nine, and if you click any of them, it will print out the number that it is. Number button should actually have a capital B, and then we're gonna to need to update that here. We also want a zero down here, as well as a back button or delete button here. And that can easily be done by adding essentially three more elements to this keyboard array. So firstly, we're going to add a blank element, which is going to take up this space right here. Then we'll add that zero and then the back button. We can add that blank button as just text and it'll just empty. It'll just be an empty string. Then we're going to essentially add the same thing that we have here, except we're going to explicitly just say that this is a zero. And then lastly, we're going to add a Instead of a number button, we're going to create a new button that will be the delete button. And that doesn't need to take any parameters because it is only going to be called once. So let's create this delete button and this will be kind of similar to how we're creating the number button. So I'm just going to copy that and then rename this to the delete button here and it won't take any parameters there. It will be a flat button though and the text look of it is going to be just a back arrow. The style will be the same, and for right now, we'll just print delete. 
you can see now that is essentially how we wanted our keyboard to look. When we type the zero, it does zero, and when we type the delete, it does print delete. Right below our keyboard, we're going to add a group of buttons, which is just gonna be a row with the two buttons. So let's go ahead and create a row here and set the main axis alignment of space evenly. The children here are going to simply be two buttons that are going to kind of do the same thing, but reversed. One of them is going to subtract money from your total saved, and the other one is going to add money to your total saved. So the action of it is essentially the same. The only difference is going to be whether or not to subtract or add the value that you type in. Because of that, we're going to create these buttons as another widget and just pass in the type, and that type being either saved or spent. Kind of like what we did with the keyboard, we're just going to call action button here, which we haven't created yet. And the first one we're going to call as spent. And then the second one we will call the same thing, but as saved. And then you'll see that this is not defined, so we need to define that. And we can do this right below our other buttons here. And this will take as well a string param and we're going to call that the type. This is going to actually return a full button and we're gonna use the raised button for this and we'll set that color to indigo accent. The child of this will be the text values that, were, that are being passed in. So that is gonna be the type value and we want the actual value so we need to use the dollar sign there. Then this will give it a bit of style as well just changing the color to white and the font size to 20. We do need to actually add an on pressed here. And then for now, we'll just print out the type. So you can see we do have the two buttons here. And if you click them, it's saved and spent. All right, so at least right now we have all of the components we need on the screen, but this doesn't look exactly how we want it to look. You can see there's a lot of spacing between these numbers and the buttons are very far down on the bottom here. So the first thing we actually want to do with these buttons are make them expanded so that they fill up the entire half of the screen that they're on. So we can go ahead and wrap this raised button in an expanded widget. And if you save that, you can see now they fill up the entire width of where they are. We don't actually want them to be on the entire width, but just most of it. So we can also add a bit of padding around that raised button. And for this, we can actually use padding symmetric and we're just going to go ahead and put a vertical of five and a horizontal of 10. So now you can see the buttons are a little bit better spaced out. This doesn't look exactly how we want it. Uh, we need to add some padding around various elements here. So starting on the bottom with these buttons, we want a little bit more padding on the left and right of each of these. So let's go ahead and wrap that whole row in some padding. And we can use the symmetric padding here and then just give horizontal padding of 15 so that will bring those in a little bit closer to the center then around the grid view we're going to do a similar thing and add padding uh, symmetric of horizontal and this one we're going to give 25 and you can see when we do that it shrinks everything down a bit more and gives us some more room down below this button here uh, lastly, we're just going to add some spacers. So we want a spacer on the top here. And we're going to place a spacer on the top and the bottom of these buttons. We are going to need to add one other element on this page, which is going to be the error message right here, which by default won't show up. But if we do have errors, we will want to write an error there that can show up. This will just be a text element. For right now, we can just write test and just give it a text style with color of white. We're also going to wrap this in a bit of padding. So add a padding of 15 just to the top of it. All right, so the buttons here are still a little bit more spaced out than we would like. And we can actually fix that by changing the aspect ratio between these buttons. So within our grid view, we can change the child aspect ratio to 1.4 and you'll see that's going to really compress everything down to a closer size than what it was. 1.0 1. is the default, so 1.4 will actually make this all a little bit more compressed. All right, great, so now we have the layout of our app all set up and 
in the future videos, we're going to be wiring this up to Firebase and actually making these buttons work and then save that information either spent or saved to Firebase. So if you haven't already, subscribe to see the rest of that. All right, ciao for now.